All right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to church. Church folks, folks be, be talking, chatting. be chatting, chatting some stuff. Well, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, baby. Good evening. I want to say my wife looking dappy. Dappy? What's that? No, I'm just joking. Dapper? No, I said dappy. I know it's dapper, I'll but say I said dapper. My nah, she looking very. Your case. I know. You know, I'm giving anyway. you. I'm giving you my best. Um, we're talking about church informed trauma. I showed up last week with the artillery. I don't know. I I'm this. coming today with church lady, church lady. Where hopefully I don't trigger any trauma. Looking think, like somebody's church mother. I think the sister girl may might catch a Holy Spirit tonight. I don't know. <laughs> I something. It's gotta do it like you do in double dutch. Mm-hmm. That's how you. That's how you get started. But welcome, though, baby. This is a welcome. Thank you for having me. Evening. Thank you for having us. Today. Thank us my for having us. My name is Pastor P in the house with right. my beautiful wife Frankie. All right, Dr. Dr. Frank Graham Brown in the house. Welcome, welcome to those who have joined us tonight. All right. So tonight we are, are talking about. Hey there, Paul. Paul. Hey there, Paul. Nice to have you, my brother. So tonight we're talking about recognizing trauma. We just dropped our latest episode this morning where you get all of your platform, your streaming podcast platforms, TS for Trauma. So tonight we are talking about the R in Hurt, recognizing trauma. Recognizing trauma. And, oh, I need my stuff. Uh, I am going to start us off with a quote. With a what? A quote. All right, baby girl. All right, here we go. All right. Once the storm is over, you won't remember how you made it through, how you managed to survive. You won't even be sure, in fact, whether the storm is really over. But one thing is for certain. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walked in. I want you to read it. Ruko Mukarami. Mukarami. That's a name to pronounce. Let me do that again. I'll repeat that again. I think that's very profound. Because it makes me think of that lovely song I love by Kurt Franklin. The storm is over I'm now. Uh, my, my, my thought. I'm so telling you, we might have to do a little, we might have to do a bar of that right quick. Yeah, Kurt Franklin, I don't like you like that, but we're going to use you. Kurt Franklin, I I'm love you like that. <laughs> Once the storm is over, you won't remember how you made it through. How you managed to even survive. Ain't that the truth? You won't even be sure, in fact, whether the storm is really over. But one thing is for certain. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walked in. I'll tell you guys. That's, Haruku Murakami. That's very profound. In mm-hmm. other words, um, that's the, I've, been, that's, I've been trying to preach this sermon for a long time, but it's, it's not coming. The storm is over now. It's called, your blessing oh. is in the storm. Your blessing is in the storm. R is for recognized trauma. And that's what we're hitting you with today. Amen. Well, we don't want to hit you with nothing. That would be physical abuse. And that's one of those antecedents or, or consequences of trauma. And we ain't trying to trigger nothing. Right. Verbal abuse. Yeah, we don't want to do that. And um, I just want to read that. Um, with that in line, what my wife said, in continuity. Oh, um, you're just going to jump into that right now? Jump right into that. Continuity. We have, okay. Mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on. You don't want to give him too much. Yes, man. All right, so on. Our last meeting, we talked about trauma. T is for trauma. And we identified what trauma is. And it's a something that happens that is a surprise or it is unpredictable. And it is out of a person's control. And it makes you feel unsafe. And it makes you have anxiety. And it gives you all these different type of symptoms. Depression. Um, and so post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic stress. So today we're talking more specifically again about church hurt. But now we're looking at how do you recognize if you have been traumatized? A lot of us 
uh, or just a lot of people who have went to church on a regular basis, they've, they've lived a life and during this life, somewhere along the way, signals have gotten crosses and miscommunication. People have said something in a different tone and people have received it differently. And as a result, oh, our, our little one, uh, our little one's singing in the background. But as a result, there's been something that rubbed you the wrong way. And during that wrong way of being rubbed, no pun intended for triggering, um, we, we, we found ourselves in some type of cycle, in some type of trauma. And there's been signs and symptoms of that. And so we're going to talk about, we're going to share today some of our experiences with church trauma and just go a little bit deeper into what can churches do? What do pastors do? What does you do organizationally to right, right. Uh, resolve it or just ameliorate those uh, ameliorate? Those I feelings. love that term. Mm. But you know, it, 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 this is something of a of a serious matter because you know, as Jesus said mm. to his disciple and to the crowd who who prevent the young one to come to him, and Jesus said, "Bid, bid not." The little ones to come to me. He said, if one offended one of these, it's better for that a milestone put over oh, his neck. A millstone, and right? being thrown into the river. Because Jesus um, under, understand the gravity of, of preventing and what it can cause, the harm that it can cause people. Because right. rejection is very painful, to be quite right. honest with you. Because re rejection can lead into so many things. Right. So Jesus understood the impact of that. And it's important that we we watch what we say mm -hmm. and how we say it, mm -hmm. right? Because we know we talk about verbal is one of the, the one that we had on because sometimes as James said, the trauma. tongue is can be deadly, mm -hmm. it can be a blessing. Is that is that the well they say it's a two-edged sword? It's a two well the tongue is a two-edged sword, right. right? It's a blessing and a curse at the same it time. You out. But we want to be um, address this issue forefront because yeah. it is serious. It is serious. Let's let's also put out there. There's different types of trauma that right. can be received through the church. We talked about record, religious trauma and spiritual trauma. We're coming from the place of spiritual trauma. That's more. Um, well, I guess they are the same. Actually, yeah. Look at the religious is said, more like, yeah, the systematic, is that, right? right? Systemic. The religious is more a systemic mm -hmm. experience. Right. In a word, an individual gotcha. experience mm -hmm. the, the 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 trauma within the church, but yet no one in the church addresses it. And then spiritual and trauma spiritual is, is more interpersonal with the right. leader, uh, members, members, uh, members, leader, members. leader, right. leader, congregation, right? Different things like that. So but there are great similarities. Too. Yeah. And so we're going to talk about it just solely from our experience of what that trauma looks like and more of a personalized experience, um, more interpersonal versus um, cultic or uh, really religiosity and different things like that. So we're going to we're going to be a little bit yeah. more um, and I can't more narrow in our talk focus. about, you know, when I was doing my ministry in Louisville, Kentucky. When I first went and I became the youth pastor of this church, I remember I, I can say something about a lady who came to me. You already there? And um, she was really hurt by a visiting church that came to celebrate our on the church anniversary. And she came to me and she said, "No, Pastor Pedro. Um, well, I wasn't pastor back then." He said, you know, um, Rev, you know, um, this gentleman came to me and he was very rude to me. Mm. And my feeling, you know, the way he addressed me in front of everybody was... Was, was it know, the pastor or you just said nah, person? a deacon, one of the oh. deacons from the church, the guest church. And after literally, you know, pray, silently pray and, and approach this gentleman and spoke with him. And let it, I address him, I said, listen, as a leader of the church, mm -hmm. you cannot behave this way. What was your role? Conduct. What was your role at this particular time? My role was the, the youth pastor okay. of the church okay. at that time. All right. And she came to me and she spoke with me. She was in tears. She was crying. And how did that go? Uh, it went well, actually. He, the gentleman received it. Now, I don't know. <laughs> he may say, oh, well, I can't say anything because I don't know what happened after. Right. When I, initially, when I confronted him about it, mm -hmm. you know, he he listened. He he 
he apologized to her because mm -hmm. I brought her with me. Yeah. And I, you know, I said, listen, what you what you said to her was very inappropriate, right? Christ-like. Okay. And he apologized to her. Are you doing it on purpose? Or was it an accident? I'm sorry if it's accident. Okay, it's just my knees. Yeah, sure I'm, and, and, I'm right on point today. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, that happens a lot of times with with trauma. It it is a result of just bad conflict management. Right. Bad conflict resolution skills on how someone resolves something. Um, so we can we can talk about that as well. Um, where do you want to start today? With now, you asked me a question on the last one mm -hmm. about how can pastors um, address these situations. Uh, what are pastors' church? roles but when it comes to addressing comes to, right. conflict, or what are pastors supposed to do when there are issues in the church and someone is visibly hurt? How do they address that? I, I I think that if the pastors are willing to be educated and and receive resources that can help them, equip them to be aware of those things. And one of the articles I read is that a well-informed church um, approaches um, trauma in, in three ways. Mm -hmm. and one mm -hmm. is to realize the, the widespread impact of the impact of trauma that is happening in the church, right? And how to minister and alongside with those who have been hurt. And number two, recognize the signs and symptoms, as we talk about That's last week. That's what we're talking about today, right? right? Today, right. Symptoms it. of trauma in men and women and in family. Because remember, one of the things that psychology has pointed out mm -hmm. is that when you call it the, uh, the recipient who go to counseling and you may think that the child is the only one who having the problem. Well, guess what? That's not true. Right. Because that is a biblical it's concept. A, so because wider spread all, there's issue. a wider spread. So the child behavior does impact the entire family. Okay. Psychologically, emotionally. And Paul said, if one hurt, everybody hurt. Right? So it's not so we can't say, well, he just him or her having an issue or problem. Right. That's on the no. It's it's all of us, right? Right. So recognize that there is a problem. They understand the impact of it. And how that is 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 causing a major problem in the church. And if we don't address it, mm -hmm. it can it can cause a domino effect. Right? Let me ask you a question. Is since you're you got a little pad, you got a little bass in your voice, we're talking about recognizing it. <laughs> um, is trauma a good thing or a bad thing? Can it be perceived as a good thing? It could be um unintentional. Because our quote is you got to go through something. You got to go through something. something, right? And we talked about suffering with a purpose and different things like that. How can people see the trauma that they're going through as something that's going to help them out, be stronger in the long run? I would say trauma is a good thing, but something or, good can come out. Okay, of it. I said, are we over spiritualizing it? No, 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 over, no, 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 spiritual. I think trauma. I think no one expects to be treated in any way, right? Right. So when someone started to have a conversation that person get upset mm -hmm. and words come out and that can be very impact impactful to that individual mm -hmm. but at, it's at the same time something good can come out of it if if the recipients who have received the impact of that are willing to amend and to yeah. grow and to forgive which right? again comes with time right. i hate comes to say it no trust me time does not heal it doesn't and that's doesn't why heal. that's why i almost wanted to retract the statement but it comes with with progression right in christian maturity. so recognize it okay. right we got that's that one and the third one respond to it you know to the needs of its congregation the community and why do we respond mm -hmm. because we want to respond to it that it doesn't grow mm. that we address the person that you know because we don't want to leave room for the enemy to creep in and take advantage of the vulnerability of that individual who have been damaged when i think of responding that means okay the pastor a knows that something's going on or whoever is involved in the in the trauma knows that it's addressed right, right? and then now the question is what do we do with it afterwards right because the response How do we talks respond? about right the knowledge of it right yeah you know growth that comes i agree. yeah I agree. integrating I the knowledge I that agree. the pastor receive and implement that right one way of responding that well, whatever resource you you are received, yeah. then you need to implement that resource, you know, that knowledge um, to help the church as a whole mm -hmm. and to help the individual as well. We had a um, 
at church today, we were talking about a sermon. Um, if I can, if I can chat about it just quickly, real general, um, love and justice, right? Is a, is a theme. And one of Jonah. the facets of that is you are required to love your enemies or love people that you don't even like. And, you know, it was, it was decent and it was, it was, you know, theoretical and all this stuff. But then my big, my question is, okay, we realize it that we have an issue with whomever. Um, we've recognized that this is traumatic or something's happened. But then once we respond, what does that really look like? Like we're telling people this and that, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that. How? It's like we're leaving out steps. The how is So no what is step. the action? What right. What is the action-based plan in order to really be able to facilitate well, and I, I, I think Jesus right? really gave us the how. He called it the power of clean. All right. The Spirit come alongside. But let's come. It's 2023. No, no, no. I'm 2023. But the we how got social we media. We is, got all this other right. stuff. How do we address? How do we make that right? Like, if I'm honest about it, and I got my church hat on today. Um, <laughs> what am I? Why I got like you? Why? Like, if you're not in my circle. Why? Why? Not, Why are you forcing me to like somebody I don't need to like? But you know, why I gotta that, love you if I don't if we ain't we ain't like that. But the question is though, why do God have to like you? Why do oh, God have to love you? Because he made me. I ain't make you them. See, that was the same issue with Jonah today with the message of justice. I know, but but, but then is, is, the point is how? How is the Or case? even more specifically, why? Then I'm asking, how did Jesus address our own? But God, why you got to talk about God don't like me? You know, why you got to put God in here? God's supposed to like everybody. Because Jesus showed us how to But I'm address just saying, it, I right? don't, like, but it's, it's, like, why? It is, it is. Because honestly, so, honestly, so people are thinking, right. like, why well, do I have to like you address if, it? If, we, if I'm not, if we're not in the same circles. Right. If but we've it, clearly, the, the, you know, we've clearly divided or we're clearly... Well, I'm talking. I'm here. You're there. See, that's what you're saying. But I'm talking about. Uh, I was kind of referring to you. The how question is says, how do we address the? the yeah, I took left. Right. Yeah. I'm. I'm trying to put you right back. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was the hat. The hat. It's gets hat. Me. Right. But it's how Audrey's do hat. the pastor? How do the body um, address that? Right. Because like I said, we need, once we get the knowledge, we need to integrate that knowledge we have. Oh, yeah. So that was my question. It, right? How? How do you yeah. implement it? That and was then, good. well, we implement Do it. we make ministries? Do we... What else do we do besides ministries? Here's a, here's a prime example. You're That's all we do in church yeah. are ministries. So yeah. what else can you do? I think you and I just did an um, awesome ministry on um, your your grief is matters. Mm -hmm. Right? And one of the things that we have noticed, I'm not saying all churches, because there are, there are major that there, there are many churches out there who don't have. I'm put your mic closer to you now. Right, who do not have a grief ministry. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, and if you don't have a grief ministry, how can you address um, someone who's grieving? Right. I'll share with my wife that I went but to the grief gym. Grief is definitely different yeah. from trauma. Right. I know. But I'll use that under, uh, just an example. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's how, that's one of the way we kind of address it. Because if you don't have a grief ministry, then you cannot address when people go into grief. Mm -hmm. Because you leave people in their pain, in their sadness, in their sorrow, wallowing. But if you have a grief ministry that is implemented in the church, that's the how you begin to address okay. helping people to overcome. Again, the ministry. The ministry. But what right. else can you do besides create a but ministry? But we've created this ministry on um, trauma is that, you know, hopefully someone who's been through it, who understand it, mm -hmm. you know, then you ask that person to lead that ministry, right? And plus you want to train people to make sure they understand the the dynamic that that is happening, you know, uh, because one of the things that we don't want to go and uh, to do is enter a ministry unprepared, right? Because we don't want to do that. That's a whole nother thing. That's all I'm saying. Church. So, let, let me, right. That's how we do it, right? We train people, yeah. right? And prepare them to address that. Mm -hmm. The final one we want to talk about is that resist re traumatization. Resist. This. Because this is the key right here, right? It's a victim that cannot occur when recognition of trauma is not... Oh, I'm doing too fast? Sure. A victim that can occur when recognition of trauma is not combined with compassion, mm. 
desigmatization mm. of mental health. Tra- in other words, one of the things you don't want to, you know, put a um, you sound like a, a label upon people yeah. symptom, right? Hey, hey, number five. And this must, you know, in other words, if you are not aware of those situations, because we're talking about some of the triggers, um, right? That can, if you're not aware of that, if you're not trained. I'm, I'm properly aware of those um, side effects. Then what happens is that you can re-trigger a re-traumatized yeah. individual who have been hurt. So is is it's a lot in that because it is. if you're trained, that person still has to heal wholly, right? Or there's always going to be room for the person to be re-traumatized oh, even if you aren't the new right. person that did it that's why the five-fold ministry so is important yourself. right people yeah. know christian in the church know what they give us because people need to step yeah. up christian needs to step up and, and begins to take take initiative yeah. and begin to address it but anyway mm-hmm. we so we that's how we um approach it right yeah i was gonna say um understanding understanding how a person's thinking feeling and behaving uh, is affected by the trauma and understanding that trauma can affect understanding that can uh, understand that trauma can affect how individuals relate to God and others right. because no matter in what area you were traumatized and that always leads back to your spirituality that always leads back to how did this happen to me why did God let this incident happen to me and then you have to really unpack that mm. and figure out was it really his was it really his doing how did he just let that happen or what am i supposed to be from a lighter word of saying it going through it and i feel like i'm okay at saying that because i've been through it and so i'm just treading lightly to not minimize anyone else's trauma um because trust me i i have it right but then the longer you're removed from it, the further you're removed from, from it, then it really starts to unveil itself as, okay, what is this lesson I'm supposed to be learning? Or what am I not supposed to do again? It's like when you're a kid and you put your, you're like, mom, what's that? And you're touching everything and you put your hand over the stove and mom's like, don't put your hand on the stove, you're going to get burnt. And you're like, oh, I'm cool. And then the baby puts their hand on the stove and they burn it. They're like, mm, I'm not touching that again. And so every time they see fire, they're they're having a heart attack because they've been traumatized. But they know what's the lesson? Don't touch that fire. Don't get near that fire. Mm. Right? You get burned. I remember Zola did that when she was little. She was like, we're at my, uh, my cousin Connie's house and he had a fireplace. And he was like, girl, don't put your head in that fireplace. She was like, okay. And as soon as my cousin <laughs> Connie went to the kitchen, she was like, touching it. And burns her hand and she start, she called me and they were crying and everything and my cousin comes like go on what I tell you he slapped some Vaseline on her and said y'all go ahead and, and have a good time and come on back she'll be alright <laughs> and to this day she's about to be 13 and she's like mom you want to put my hand in the fireplace I was like what's the lesson don't touch the fire boom don't touch the fire you get burned right you get burned right but guys you know um, so let me ask you let me ask yes. you um, I would talk, as we're talking about trauma and as we said we were going to do on last week give me an example when did you first recognize um, that you had church trauma now that we know what it is because mm-hmm. before we couldn't really identify what that thing was but when was the first time that you recognized that you had church trauma you know I remember or trauma I, uh, trauma um, I remember my first time and I came to church gave my life to the lord and i was coming and i didn't really understand the the impact of that Mm -hmm. um experience but now i realize wow that was it's a big thing that was a big thing and that was that incident happened in the 90s and someone who did something against me and i didn't realize well i'll just put it this way i'm a very transparent person the person I'm like almost accused me. Well, not almost. You well, almost. well, um, I was trying to be nice, but the person accused me um, of saying that she worked at uh, um, you call it um, the daycare social work. No, she does social work, oh, and okay. she wanted to report me to um, child protective service of uh, something she accused me of that I didn't do, and the Lord exonerated me. Mm-hmm. But I felt. You know, I, I felt a little um, sad about it. I was hurt. And uh, the more I approached this individual on Sunday morning, this individual would walk away from me. 
and as I approached this individual on Sunday morning, the children would jump in, in her car and drove off. So the impact, I, I didn't realize the, the impact of that psychologically did, 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 did hit me. Go ahead. And, um, and the thing about it is that, um, as I said before, uh, there was two individuals that really helped me to understand Jaren, give me that, please. Go ahead. No, no. Um, charger. Okay, go ahead. And um, <laughs> I'll tell you, you go ahead. But, but I, you know, I didn't understand the impact of that time. And I said it was two individuals that came out, two church mm -hmm. individuals that came out that really um, nurtured me, semi-nurtured me in, in that so situation. So when did you recognize that you had trauma? Uh, what are the signs and symptoms? Or oh, were there any signs or symptoms? As I said, you know, everybody um, experiences it differently. That's what I was saying before. Uh, I think with mine is that um, I experienced sadness. I was sad. Mm -hmm. You know, but as I said, as these two individuals came in and began to comfort me and to reaffirm me, I think that did help me a little bit. Mm -hmm. right? Not just so much to withdraw into my emotional um, feeling. So what are you what are you thinking? Hold on, freaking out! Shut the door. I'm shocked our kids. You know we ain't in no studio. Yeah, we was. We were with all these dang on interruptions. I uh, know. Excuse she us like, one minute, please. What a remote at? The other kids like the laptop ain't got no battery. Paige is like, give me the the battery cord. Well, we got enough juice. Sorry, guys. Yeah, but um, when. You know, I, like I said, I was sad and um, I did see myself sometimes crying. Okay. Yeah, I was crying. Um, but the uh, these two ladies did help me tremendously. So you just rec you recognized it because of the, the sadness that you feel. We were right. talking about those signs and symptoms. Did you notice yourself maybe being isolated from the congregation after that? No, after that's you? what I'm saying. You know, I, I did not find myself isolated because of these two individuals who have stepped into my life. Was it an immediate brought... turnover? Like that happened on Thursday and they were like, oh, this is, we're good on Sunday. Right, because these two individuals. I'm asking, was it immediate? Response. Yes, we immediate response. Okay, right. immediate. Two individuals oh, immediate okay. response. Okay, and that's why helped me come over. As I stated before, our initial. Um, yeah, I'm serious that everybody go to it differently, right? Some people may not have those angel come along and immediately sweep you up. Yeah, from from the enemy Definitely from damaging not. you. But Definitely. Unfortunately, not. I didn't went through that. Um, that that that. You didn't have that 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 uh intermediate period where you just had to mull in your grief right and then figure out where am i going to church or am i not going to church right they kind of like swooped you up right right in between time okay and that was very helpful that's that's amazing yeah that's amazing but you know we need people like that and that's why i call i, I see those two individuals as really being mature and and i have very in very insightful because when you see something happening, yeah, you don't wait too long. But yes, I know we have to we have to use wisdom and how yeah. to navigate that. Now, any other any other time here, someone would say that's not my business. Let me stay out of that. It ain't got nothing to do with me. And that's how a lot of trauma really develops. And it could be prevented just like this was, um, to save a soul. Um, but others are usually kind of like standing in the background, like you're driving and driving past an accident, and all you're doing is just lingering and just standing there and staring at it and not really saying, "Oh." Like I said, I was right? very young. So in that the is, face. yeah, I was young in the face. I didn't, good. I didn't understand. However, I didn't understand. I was brought up as a Roman Catholic in a way, so I, I mean, I went to Catholic school all my life. But, so that's a follow the Holy Spirit. That's all I know. That's all I know too, but. <laughs> But the point is that the people still good though. Yeah, the point is that these these two ladies yeah came and really encouraged me. I think I think that what make the difference for me to be quite honest. I with agree, you. and I don't think that that happens with yeah. That definitely is not a that's a one off. That's something right. that doesn't happen often. Right. Um. So they realized it. They recognized it. They responded, and they 
put in the efforts to resist the re-traumatization. And those are symptoms of what we call the trauma-informed church. That's the culture that we really uh, are urging a lot of churches to um, adapt because, you know, trauma is it's really it's, different. Way. I mean, right. trauma can just be everything that happened with George Floyd in 2020 and just being black in America and just always being on guard. That creates trauma. Then you have maybe something that happens at home with your family. Abuse, domestic violence, that creates trauma. Oh my God. You might have kids that have um, special needs or challenges and then you have to go to church and they don't have the ministry that is going to help you hear God and take care of them. That's trauma. And so there's so much that goes on. And so a trauma informed church creates that environment. Right. That mm -hmm. is, uh, that includes the five principles of trauma. They create a safe place, right? They offer collaboration. They're saying, okay, I, I, I know there's something going on. Let us figure out the best ways to work with you. You know, one of the things you said something, you know, uh, re triggering and stuff like that. Huh? I remember this book. I've not I finished read it yet, but I remember this experience. I think I shared this before. My a young God. lady who had been raped. Because she's been young and you know, they say, Oh, you're so beautiful and they use that as a way to abuse her. Okay. And now once she you know, she grew up and you know, um you know, when people were approaching her and say, Oh, you are so beautiful, mm -hmm. she got, you know, the word beautiful is like a a signal to be to be yeah, traumatized that's again. That's like I, that. I stated that before. Um it could it, it's it's the process of the re triggering of it. And I think yeah. you, know, yeah, you got to know because I remember even and you can that because trauma you can you can reignite someone's trauma and like I said you're not the in initial abuser right you know you can just come by a lot of people get re-traumatized when you're just when you touch a late especially ladies if you touch them a certain way that can really put them off because something like that might have happened before right right even some guys but a trauma yeah. Not seriously, no. I mean, and, seriously. and especially in this time that's okay. been in, you know, you know. But let's go back to the five <laughs> principles. I mean, if somebody's rubbing in your shoulder, like, "Hey, Pastor Pedro," first of all, you should be like, "Okay, well, let me see where my wife at," because I'm around the corner looking at you. This, you know, yeah, because my wife got um, jealous one time and we went to, you know, get our fingers done, and this lady was oh my god, massaging me. <laughs> Somebody just built in the package. I can get none of that. Can she get? She was traumatized. I was traumatized. <laughs> Look, she was about to get this drama though. Um, oh my <laughs> but uh, high principles of yes. trauma, safety, collaboration, choice. Make sure people have the choice, mm. right? Um, another principle of the trauma-informed church with care is to cultivate trustworthiness. You know, and you know what? Stop right there. That's a lunch note. That's, right. a lunch that's a lunch note. That's a lunch note right there. Because there's a lot of people in church going to church every day. Hey, sister. Hey, brother. And guess what? I don't trust you. I don't know you enough to tell you my secrets. That actually you know, pray for me and, and not tell you why. Thing. And that's the thing. You know, where is the trustworthiness at? You know, I heard, right, you know, I heard this lady on Instagram that I follow now. Yeah. All on Instagram. Just let me finish. So she gets tra re traumatized by that. But, but anyway. <laughs> that Chinese lady. <laughs> no, I'm not. not good. Okay. That's not her. Block but, her. No, she says something, you know, because um, she's a Christian and she was talking about that how, you know, people need to understand the difference that it's not church that hurt people. Is people who hurt people, and sometimes people need to understand that there is a difference, right? Hmm. Now, unfortunately, um, I was getting, no, it's my water. Unfortunately, get some water in the fridge. Get your water out the refrigerator. Get your water out the refrigerator. Unfortunately, our daughter, she always does get this. I don't know why. I tell her to give her pop pow. But do like doing. the guy Randy Pyron right. on uh, Instagram. Wow, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> But get the water out the refrigerator. She said, you know, she said something that people need to understand that it's not it's, it's not the church that hurt people. It's people who hurt people. Unfortunately, when people who um um who call themselves Christian, I think I'm wrong. We all come, we all fall short now mm -hmm. and then. And I'm not saying this super Christian out there. You got to do everything right. Right. No, I'm not saying that. But here's the thing that you know. Unfortunately, there are people 
who are in the mix and and we lump people in in that group to say they are part of the church yeah and when they are being damaged by those within the church they um somebody said you can't make this stuff now but now we got a visitor you got stuff in me okay thank you we ain't got nothing in the dryer Else? Yeah, we do got stuff in the dryer. Okay, keep going, keep going. Lord, what a day. Well, let me finish up. We was talking about the five principles, right? So let me go ahead and get my time, because Mr. Grant Brown. The five principles of a trauma-informed church safety. Choice, collaboration, trustworthiness. Let me put a pin, let's go back. As I was saying, there's a lot of people recently who are in church and don't trust the people that they sit next to in the pews okay we've been having these prayer calls and where you have prayer calls and they're like pray for me and then say what you the pray for what i don't mind a general prayer but then don't um just you know work with work, brother and sister we're talking about what we need to pray for you for okay or if you fall into some illness and then you're off sick and we're trying to figure out if you're okay and you ain't telling nobody. So it leads to the question, do you trust your brother and sisters in Christ? And that's you're the same. Not sharing? Right. And that's the same. Don't yes. ask me to be transparent with you if you're not transparent with me, right? But the sad part is that the church has read a state um, in this time where let me finish my and then yeah. and then and then empowerment. Yeah, empowerment empowerment is another guiding guiding principle of a trauma-informed church um how are you empower people to be as self-advocates for themselves to be better advocates for their families to be better advocates for their their truth whatever that might be mm -hmm. um and that's how that all gets baked into just creating a culture i talked about it on RTS for trauma, creating a culture of humility, creating an atmosphere that is hospitable to people to come, right? And that's what that looks like. Right. You were given the- uh, I was just talking about the guiding principles of trauma. Right, the guiding principle, but trustworthy as, as we're saying until we, uh, you know- Did you get the clothes out? Yeah, we did, we did. So unfortunately, <laughs> but anyway, but hey, no nah. stuff in there all day no right but anyway but we are back sense. we're traumatized by that no this apartment i'm saying i'm gonna pull my gun out trauma oh the bible the word <laughs> no, I'm just ah. no 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 but no trustworthy is one of those rare commodity today who can you trust and you know what the biggest the bigger issue is People have went in with blind faith and trusted people because that's just what you're supposed to do. And then they've gotten burned and then they show up at another church and they act like everybody's untrustworthy. And then you're feeling like the victim and you didn't even do anything to that person because now you're talking about you know, the boundaries they, are well, up right. and I don't know how to let those down. But there's uh, um, there's also another part of it because I think I, I did preach on Sunday and I said, yeah, sometimes we in the church get the blame sometimes but come on now it's not all the time the church is causing it's not always the it's church. not always right it's about 60 40 though right it's not always but sometimes it may be something that you been to yeah and you're not realizing that you've been through some situation but you have not addressed that right and oftentimes when you go into those circles um and and you go with some kind of expectation but you have not dealt with your own issue yeah that you have been you know that you experienced for numbers of years I and mean, you come in in that circle and somebody may say something very you know innocently and yeah. because your feeling got hurt yeah emotionally because you have not dealt with it emotionally then it kind of re-trigger you, you well you kind of re-trigger your own traumatization because you have not dealt with your issue and so you know oftentimes you know we can't just blame it on the church all the time yeah. you know but trust really trust is one of those core 
pillar of the church that has been replaced. And I think trust is in, on a larger scale, people just don't trust remiss, excuse me. the church in general. Right. No, not even in church. I'm not talking for a particular church. Oh, oh right. I was either. Right. I'm just saying church as a whole. Like right. not the people and just not the pastor, just not the deacons, but I'm just saying the institution. I remember a brother we met when we first moved to New York who we were going to church and he was talking to Pedro and he was like, oh, you know what? I just don't believe in organized religion. I'm like, what? <laughs> But you're here every Sunday. What does that mean? You know, I don't know where the money's going. And okay, everybody says that. We get it, right? Um, but what kind of trauma you got? Right. Have you been burned before? Um, but let me tell you, before you go into that, you supposed to ask me when did I recognize my trauma? Uh, I was going to get there, but I, you know, I thought you was on a the roll there for a minute. Oh, I didn't like you talking about him like that. <laughs> but... But my, you know, I know I am. I'm very intimate with that, and you know, um, you, you do you feel comfortable sharing? Yeah, I'm that? all right. All right. Um, one of the things that we don't want to do though on this platform because we don't want to recur the same thing over and over. Oh yeah. Because <clears throat> it come a point when we have to know. Okay, Jesus, That's we're going to give you the wheel. You're going to do it. It's my line. Yeah, I like to say but that. But here's the thing, though, and this is the key. I mean, I, I must say this, and then no, go ahead. ahead Seth, say yeah, it. one of the things, and the Bible tells us this here that you remember the, the situation with Jacob and Esau concerning the birthright. Oh, giving up a, yeah, a plate and of he and Jacob's um, trick his brother yeah. Esau and with the hairy Esau, chest. Yeah, he sold his birthright. Huh. But in the story, right in in Genesis, we saw how. When Joseph was coming back from his uncle Laban with many riches, and he heard that his brother was coming with many men, and he got he got nervous, and he sent you know a group of family kind of um, compartmentalized uh, group of people to go in front of him. So so many times he he's gone. But anyway, yeah, yeah. What happened is that when he finally you know met with Esau, Esau said, "No, man, I I forgave you. Mm. Don't worry about it. We all good." But the writer of Hebrews says something very profound. Who was the writer of Hebrews? Um, Paul. Some say it was Paul, some say it was not. But anyway, that's not a theological oh, okay. thing. But the thing is that the writer of Hebrews said that he made this statement. And Esau could not forgive himself. Mm, mm. You know, that's very that's powerful, something. you know. The brother you know, forgave him, but he couldn't even forgive himself. No, for what no he, he forgave Jacob for what he has done to him. But oh. the writer of Ebu said that he could not forgive, forgive himself, himself right. of selling his birth. And sometimes you may be the problem that we trigger your own re-traumatization when you come to a, that place where you cannot forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes if you if we don't reach that point in our life where we say, okay, Lord, we're going to leave it at your feet. Mm -hmm. We're going to let you do what you need to do. And then I'm going to move. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. For some people, it's not easy. The mm. journey is not easy, but there must come a point where you have to leave it at Jesus' feet mm -hmm. uh, if he wants to carry this heavy load on, mm -hmm. because you're going to find yourself re-triggered over and over. So, When do you think that is? When do you think that point is when you can just stop getting irritated or... Well, I, I have one I could share, but I'm going to let you go ahead oh, okay. and, so and, and, um, and share you it. Your, Okay. And you want to just go ahead and share yeah, that? Yeah, I want to know before maybe I share mine. Maybe well, then I, I was in seminary and I did all my assignment first time, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what the expectation. I mean, I knew what the expectation is, but I gave up haphazardly, you know, work that is not, you know, and the professor gave me like a B, a decent B. And um, the second semester, I had the same professor, and um, so I said, okay, you know what? This time around, I'm a Get all my notes. I'm doing my reading. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take notes from my reading. I did everything, you mm -hmm. all. And then at the end of the semester, now he had a knowledge move for the class. I did the paper, and then my paper was, was the best paper, right. um, exegesis paper that I did. And but at the end of the semester, he gave me a lower grade. Lower than a B? No, I got a B. I a B plus. But I'm thinking, hold on. I gave quality work. You expecting the A. Right. So okay. my fold and my binder was, was jam packed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I did everything. Mm -hmm. So I went to him and said, you know, you know, uh, Professor Matthew, you know, I have gave you everything. Why you gave me a, a B plus? Mm -hmm. And you know, he he's smiling my face. 
and I tell you, I became so hangry with him. Did he became, say why? You know, uh, he didn't give me a, a reason why. Yikes. You know, he just smiled. And I became so hangry with him. And and I remember you all that, you know, I look at him and said, you know, Professor, I, I forgave you. I said it to him. But every time I would pray, <laughs> and his name would pop right in my head, I'd be so hangry in my prayer. When you went to St. Matthew. Right. I was so upset. hangry, yeah. right? My my emotion was 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 stirring in me. And then one day I decided to say, you know, Lord, I'm gonna leave it. I'm I'm dealing with this now. I say it verbally, mm -hmm. but internally, I'm still struggling with that. Yeah. Um, forgive uh, this anger that I have for this mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. who have looked down upon me. Yeah. And give me X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. So now I brought it to the Lord and I said, God, okay, only you can remove this anger. Yeah. From your sure. heart. And it took some time. It took some time. Okay. So the the long story short, the short. Uh, version that it, it takes time. It takes time. That's right. It took some time because Lord, every time I see him, I want to, you know, bless him, Lord. Want to want to give him a spiritual bullet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's how some people um, and people regress in that in, the, in that in that okay. behavior, right? You see people who come out aggressively. It's something you yeah. can understand. What is going on there? There's always something underneath Something that. is, there's an unalignment. Right. Something is happening. I agree. And that individual have not learned how to address it. And how is that someone did not, with right, this. someone oh. have not come alongside him yeah. to show him how to resolve yeah. whatever he or she is going to. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You want to share with um, where were we at? What were we talking about? Um, your trauma. How do you recognize it? Okay, well, so I'll make my my long story short. Um, very short. <laughs> how do you recognize it? I realized that I had. What's up, Lily? She's gone. I mean, she's gone. Because right there, girl. She was like, "You better come back on." Look, we see you. We love you, girl. Um, come off from that trip with some 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 Caribbean stuff. All right, well, look you back. <laughs> All right, so well, go ahead. how sorry. I recognize that I even had trauma, um, particularly trauma, and I know y'all get tired of me talking about it, but I'm telling you, you ain't lived a life unless you lived in New York City. And Jay Z ain't never said it wrong. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Whoever said it, him or Alicia Keys, I ain't crying. It's got makeup in my eye. But they hear something said saying, before, so it's not well, from them originally. Yeah, who said it? The white guy. Um, New York, New York. I forgot his name. Okay, anyway, he said it. Um, <laughs> oh, Somebody said it. That, that guy, he said it. Um, so, anyway, uh, driving down the street, minding my own business, headed to someone's house. Driving, if you're in New York, you go down Boston Road. We used to live in North Bronx. And so I was driving down Boston Road, and I ended up making a left onto Laconia Avenue. And this is the former neighborhood that we used to live in for about four years before we moved to Yonkers. And as I was driving down the street, um, as I was driving down the street, uh, I began to tear up and I really started to have like heart palpitations the further I went closer to our old house. And um, my palms started to sweat as I was driving and I couldn't breathe. And the closer I got to where we lived, I really become, I really got beclimped. I couldn't breathe and I was just kind of panicking. And then I wanted to pull over. Um, over there by the 46th precinct but as i got to the 46th precinct it got worse so mm. i kept driving all the way down so from laconia off of boston road all the way to 233rd maybe about a mile and a half or so um and it wasn't until i pulled off of 233rd to go where i had to go i think i was going right to go to wakefield um my symptoms kind of went down and i was like oh okay what just happened here and then later that night when me and pedro had pillow talk i was like babe I think I had a panic attack. And he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I was driving past our old neighborhood and I literally just started crying and I couldn't understand what it was. And he was like, okay, you know, kind of shrugged it off a little bit to his testament because we both were just trying to figure out what it was. It wasn't until we went back to our old neighborhood, maybe a few weeks later, or even a month later, unbeknownst to both of us, we're just driving down the street and all of a sudden I just started crying. 
Yeah, she started crying. Crying. Yeah. And I just started tearing up and I just uncontrollably started shaking. And I was like, I am having a panic attack. I have trauma from where I lived. We lived in one apartment for a year and a half, maybe two years. And then we lived in another apartment right around the corner only for a year. I remember because we got kicked out. Sweet Jesus. So we got evicted twice. Right. Um, back to back. Perfect, not perfect tenants, but tenants nevertheless. Paying no, we were perfect tenants. Let's be and honest. I, and as a result of that, we were I perfect had tenants. trauma because the first two years living in our first apartment was literal, literal hell. Um, there was never a day that I was so nervous when Pedro would go to work and he'd leave me at home by myself. I was like, I have to live here. I have to do this all by myself um, that day. And so I recognized I had trauma definitely when that happened and then the reoccurring trauma was when every time i drove past that place or both those houses i uncontrollably couldn't um just control my i, I was fearful i was full of anxiety and then i had to realize as i talked to Pedro and i talked to that one of my sisters about it she was like girl you, you got trauma you have trauma something has happened to you uh that you were under spiritual attack you and your family and they got you and that's how you know when she had trauma. And I didn't know how to put that in words because I had never, I've been in churches all my life. And there's, of course, there's people in church that you get along with or you don't, uh -huh. but then you keep it moving. But the issue was with this, I had to see these people or one particular person every Sunday. The person who caused me the most trauma was the Sunday school leader that taught our children, well, just one at that time every sunday so as she's being mean to me and my family i had to take her to sunday school and she had to teach my kid how to be a better christian when she was treating us like dog crap right and then you know and i'll just sum it up that way and the issue that really got me is that when we brought it to the leadership of the church we were looked at like we had the issue it wasn't it wasn't resolved obviously like we wanted it to be we wanted her to be removed because how are you a ministry leader and you're causing your your associate pastor and his wife angst and grief and drama and trauma in their house and you're still leading the ministry wasn't it it Hans was like he was like you know what not my, not my monkey not my circus so can i actually have you reach a, a place now where you can say now well, we've been here nine years. Right. We'll be here nine years in the May 28th. And um, yeah, I've forgiven uh, the individual. Yeah. I mean, because you know what? It caused me so much pain and so much grief. I didn't want to go to church. I was pissed off at everybody at church for not coming to my defense. But the thing was, I couldn't tell people about it. As I said before, more so because I was ashamed and I was afraid and... <clears throat> In our We're gonna unpack mediation, that shame. We're gonna unpack that shame I couldn't say anything time. anyway, even right. though she was able to go and tell everybody about the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and the bigger thing was I didn't want to be messy for the sake of my husband's job. So I really had to just eat that up inside and just deal with it. And that caused me depression. I was quite, I was depressed about it. Um, and again, I didn't know I was depressed until someone said, yo, since you're depressed, this is causing you issues. Um, you know, I couldn't sleep. I had a problem eating. I'm not one of those people when you get depressed, you don't eat. Honey, look, I'm eating everything. All right. So I was yamming it up. I'm um, enjoying my life being sad, but still eating. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so now as I'm losing weight, they're like, since you lost weight. I'm like, you didn't tell me I was big. You see, you've been eating good, right? I was eating good. But here's the thing, though. Here's the key thing about it, because... I mean, I'll let you get to that. But that, yeah. that was it. It was... it was. I didn't recognize it until I felt the symptoms, but then until someone actually verbalized it and said, you're going through this. You aren't yourself. I always tell Pedro, and I tell people who know me, well, if I'm not talking, if I'm not loquacious and a chatty catty, something's wrong with me. Uh -huh. If you don't see me cracking jokes, then check on me because that's my daily thing right. so as i was becoming recluse i had all those symptoms right i was quiet i was reserved i was isolated um i had issues sleeping and she wasn't giving me no sex but he wouldn't get none i didn't feel like it you know what i'm saying real talk he was like was it me i was like i just don't feel like doing anything right i'm saying what's up you know, he didn't do nothing you know <laughs> he's trying, he he trying to go get her 
Uh, I'm trying. Um, no, I'm not. I'm trying to get no. 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 <laughs> but I, the point, yes, yeah. that's how I recognize right. when people called it out, and I really saw it for what it was. And the reason why I said I want you, you know, sometimes people may say, "Oh, I heard this said before." No, that's a reason why, right? Reason why? Um, we why we keep um, not really keep, but want to just talk about it because yeah. this is real. And I share my wife. Because I tell my wife, I want this right. Everybody makes it think like everyone right. put it together. We look, look, I always say, especially when I was going through my stuff, I don't look like, I don't uh, feel like I look or I don't look like I feel. Right. I look better than I feel because I was feeling like trash inside. I was feeling very um, suicidal ideations inside. Mm. Right. But I look good. But for me, though, when I far away said, right, you came out good. I have to say that because. As he said before, the quote that you read before, I'm read the last line. It said, when you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walk in it. And that's the yeah. key. Remember, you know, your uh, this is writer, Bill Eimer, who said, God does not waste your sorrow. That's it, Lil. No, God it does isn't. not waste your sorrow. Whatever trauma that you have experienced, if we only give it to God, God will, God will use that trauma and make you come out as a different person. And guess what? Mm -hmm. You become a conduit to the same person who have offended yeah. you. But let and me tell you, that takes, that doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't go over overnight. Like, like I said, right. we've been here nine years and we went through hell for the first four until we moved to Yonkers. And I didn't even get, I didn't even feel like I was in trauma until two years after that. Mm-hmm. So it took two years just to say we got some peace and, and realize what a real life looks like without all that stress to finally go back to that place and say, oh, my God, that's where that drama occurred. Right. And that's why it's, you know, when we talk about recognizing so time, right, time is of that. Right. We have to recognize those what it is, mm -hmm. because if we don't recognize this, um, what it is, we're going to re-traumatize yeah. the whole entire um, individual or the situation but you right. have to have people who have wisdom you have to have people who are spiritually in tune you have to right. have people of faith that are around you to recognize it because I didn't know what it was myself but what I said I yeah. even identify what it is let me so tell you I brought it to you and you was like yeah that's yeah. that's about well, right well, that's, that's what I want to say because when she brought it to me that she was in have that she was having um, panic attack. No, panic attack. No, you don't play with panic attack. You know, because sometimes you can't breathe. You know, and it can it can cause some some other situation. Mm -hmm. So when she told me that she had panic attack, I mean, it hit me. I said, "Whoa, this thing is for real." Yeah. You know, because I saw the progression of my wife, um, what she been through and come out of, and where she is, at, where she's at right now. Mm -hmm. So I literally see, and and that's why I said that I always want this to be a platform, yeah. not so much to bash people or go against people, but I want this to, this be a, a platform where people can identify yeah. that you know what? Wow, I've been through that, and, and I didn't realize that I was going through yeah. what I was going through, and I want this be a platform where you know what? There's hope. Mm -hmm. And and as we talk if about next week around, and pack it a little bit, a little bring bit some longer. more scripture in next week. Yeah. Is that listen, God is still in the business. In the blessing business. In the blessing of right. redeeming oh. and restoring. <laughs> but one of the thing But one other thing though, one of the things that triggered trauma too, as we you remember you said this one time, does prosperity gospel does that too. And that's the church. I, I, we are not going to go into, but we're yes. Gonna, start with prosperity but gospel. the problem is, it, it did because people who have given some money and God didn't come yeah, through for yeah. them, well, they end up another, being traumatized. That's a whole thing another thing. But I it's say just no, other it's, diverse areas that lead people who, out from the church. Are traumatized if we have people. to do a part two, we shall. But no, we're not do part two. We're going to go unpack it. What I want to say is, right. um, as we're moving forward to unpack, we'll talk a little bit about both of our experiences and how we have evolved from that like i said four years of hell two years of just sitting outside of the gate and then realizing that i had trauma and now years four five six until doctors and can't count then seven and eight 
than realizing. I, I can't go. I don't know okay. about you. No, 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 homie. <laughs> then realizing, all right, how do we move forward? Because you can't keep yourself locked in a cell. And that's the key. Right? How do you move forward? And that's what we'll discuss. Because at this point now, I saw her this Sunday. I was like, hey, good morning. You know, and just kept it going. We ain't ever got to be best friends. We'll never, ever, ever do that. But what is not going to happen is I'm not going to allow you to vex me every time I see you. And I had to let that go. I've had to let that go for a few people um, in our church that have really rubbed me the wrong way. And I found fault with them. And I, I feel bad about that because I feel like I'm always angry at somebody that's done something. But it's because, one, I expect better because I know that we would be that type of person to you and for you. And two, I, I really know what your motive is. Right. I really yeah, know it's, it's what's <laughs> happening. And you don't nobody else see it. Right. But I see it. And so my thought process is you ain't as slick as you ain't as scot free as you say. You you just as slick as not, as my mom says. Okay. Right? So that's why I get upset no, with everybody because you're in a position to help people and you can't even help the people that right. can't even help us. Right, let me say that too. Uh, let me segue for what you just said because I know we're about to wrap I, it up. I, I cock my head to the side because you notice when you mean business. You know what I mean? Black like ladies cock their head to the side and you know. they got something profound to say. But you know, I was um, showing my wife a video of, of a preacher back in Louisville preaching. Yes, Mr. Frederick, that's what happens. He's on the oh. Mr. Frederick, what's going on, my brother? <laughs> when people, when people but you know, uh, right? You know, I was sharing my wife a video I saw. That's what to do. Were you about to? I said, "Hey, who was that?" Uh, yeah, right. No, but I, you know, the, the 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 individual who have caused some pain to me in the, in the ministry um, is preaching, is pastoring the church. Ah. Oh. And I showed my wife the video. Can you, but can, you not, can you just just open that door up just a little bit? Just crack the door open. Just give a little bit of snippet of that. Well, yeah, I, okay. Look, um, just a little snippet. The church I was minister at. Uh, you ain't gonna say everything. Not say everything. But what happened is that this individual came into the picture and tried to undermine the work that the lead pastor has placed me in. Mm -hmm. And him and him and another associate minister. Mm -hmm. And not once that both of them came back and apologized to me yeah. and say, I'm so sorry. Not once. They were very manipulative. Very manipulative. And their eyes are on the prize. Right. Because all they wanted to do was minister. Minister, right. Be a pastor. Be a right. pastor. So when I saw this individual, I mean, I knew he got a church, but when I saw the video on it was YouTube. On Facebook. It was on uh, YouTube, YouTube. YouTube. And I say, you know, you know, something almost came up on me. Hanger almost re re now occurred on me. Now got a church. And I said, you know, Lord. Mm. Got the church. You know, and then my wife said, you know, uh, you know, you never know if he, if he have dealt with God. But let me tell you something. Bible, the word of God is true. The word of God is true. Mm -hmm. You must go, Jesus said, you must go first to the person and reconcile. And if you have not done that, how can God reconcile with you? But you know what? There's a lot of people who've got a lot of reconciling to do that ain't going to never reconcile. They continue to move forward to victory, right? I don't know. So called pseudo victory. That's the I issues see. that we have. That's the issue that we have. People who know they're doing In a leadership wrong, position, who and have they done wrong. Something that they know they're right. supposed to have. And they have not been able to come back and to apologetically come back and say, no, I'm so sorry, my brother. And when I saw this individual, I said, you know, Lord, I cannot allow him being in that position to re-trigger my anger. You know, so I'm going to leave it in your head. I would say long term because you was a little fired up. Yes, I was. I was I fired was. up for him. I was. What's he doing with this? Yeah. With his uh, roll bone. <laughs> you see, and that's the thing. And that's what people need to know the difference. <laughs> people need to know. That, unfortunately... Some folks do not know the difference, yeah. but they lump all yeah. minister in that, and, and that that's was, not the case. That was what the that's what I was trying to tell you. Don't envy or don't uh, be upset about what he's doing to church because you don't know what he's doing and how he's leading these people. Definitely not the right way, mm. right? Because um, I feel like once a snake, always a snake. But I, the Christ can save you, right? Hey. But there's somewhere along there, your your little shitted skin. Is still on the trail back there somewhere. <laughs> Get a snake, I'll chop him up. That's all. <laughs> 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 
in Jamaica say, let me get my, my shit. That's it. <laughs> um, I'm going to use the word of God. That's it. It's spirit the of gentleness. Chop them up but with scripture. With scripture. So we're going to unpack this here and we're going to in, you know, yeah. involve some some biblical character mm -hmm. in, in this unpacking. Yeah. Because listen, it's real. It's, it's real. Have, people have issues with people all the time, and it always looks like the people who had offended the other person right. always comes out on top. And then the the issue is that you just have to run the race. Can I leave with a quote? Can I can I do the one? Oh, can I do the one that the lady said this morning? Hold on, hold on, hold on. But I was uh, saying, I was saying that's a good one. It's so good. It's so good. It's for fun. But the other thing, never equate people behavior. And characterize God in that that in that behavior. Right. Just because they win and don't mean they winning with that. Doesn't mean because they 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 go to church. That's how God character look like. It does not. But you know the great thing about the economy of God is that there's always redemption. Mm -hmm. There's always forgiveness, right? But remember your trauma. You can come out out of your trauma mm -hmm. being victorious. Yeah. You know, as, as I share with you the re article I've read on um, the veteran department of people who've been to trauma yeah, yeah. and have post traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. One of the things the article emphasizes is that those who, who are religious, right, choose their religion mm -hmm. as a way uh, to re um, revitalize who they are, mm -hmm. right? Even though they, they are going through the trauma, they're receiving healing. But they see their religion. For us, we see Christ is the center. That he's the one who is going to bring us to the point of wholeness, of, of, of healing. So, you know, don't see people behavior as a way to, to push you away from God. And it does happen. Okay, that's where we're okay. Yeah, it does happen. We need to get to that. I know, you're always waiting. Wait! The best thing is to no, wait on it. No. The Bible said, the they Bible said to the prophet, on the Lord Agai, it said, wait on it. Because God is going to come to you. Wait on it. God going to come to you. But anyway, I'm, I'm, my wife right. wanted to use this quote oh, you this morning. It? Yes, go ahead. It's, it's a great quote. All right, here we go. By Belva Davis. Belva Davis, the first black woman to anchor a new show on the west that's Coast. amazing and she said i'm gonna have to put this on my um my little uh, subject line for my emails don't be afraid of the space between reality and your dreams if you dream it you can make it so so that again don't be afraid of the space between your reality and your dreams or between the dreams and reality if you can dream it, you can make it so. So don't worry about oh. when it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And the prophet Isaiah Just wait said, in the space. Isaiah 54, verse 17. Wait in the space. In that, in mm -mm. conjunction with that, no, really. no weapon formed no. against you shall prosper. Everything that Sir. come against you, you have the authority. Bevel Davis. I'm, I'm, I'm using Bevel Davis. Who's supposed to end on Bevel? I know, you but I'm doing the scripture. <laughs> Blessing, blessing you all. We God bless you. Big guys, up, big up. Oh, subscribe. Subscribe, please. Notify, tell a friend and tell a friend. All right, you all. Tweet us. We're on um, everything. All right, Lydia. Bring my